Hi there, in this video, I'll be showing you how to name and categorize your sound effects. So whether you are working on expanding your own personal sound library, or if you're gonna be working on a team with other audio professionals, I'll be showing you a system that you can follow uh, for any of these things so that you can ha consistently name your sound files in, in a way that helps you be able to identify what they are uh, and even how you created it. So with that said, before we jump in, if you're new here and you're a sound designer, I have a gift for you. It is a uh, content training that I put together. It's a training I put together to help you build your portfolio and create an online presence. So if you're new to kind of sound design and you haven't really started building out a demo reel or a portfolio, this training is gonna kind of help you get started and help you get going with that. So if you're interested in seeing that, I'll make sure to put a link in the description below. All right, with that said, let's get right into it. All right, so the most common way to name your sound files and what is quickly becoming the industry standard is the universal category system, the UCS. And what that is, is basically a way of naming your sound files so that they are consistent um, across all different kinds of categories and across different industries. So it doesn't matter if you are working al alone in your own personal studio or if you send your sound files over to another studio, they will have uh, the same kind of sound file name. They'll have this exact same name and they'll also be organized the exact same way so that they're easy to find, easy to tag, easy to see exactly what it is. So what is the UCS? Basically, in terms of naming and naming convention, it's just a four-part name. So what you have is part one, you'll have your category ID, and this is a preset defined category ID uh, by the UCS, the guys that created the UCS system. So you do have to go on their website and see what those categories are so that you use their ID for your sound. So let's say you have a gunshot that'll have a specific ID just for that gunshot. And then you have underscore, and then you have your effects name. So your effects name, this is where you can write whatever description, whatever descriptor you have for your effect name. After that, you have another uh, underscore and then you have your ca uh, creator ID. And this is basically your personal ID for uh, you, for your name. So for me, it would be something like D. Dume for David Dume, or it could be like uh, just Dume or whatever it is. There's different like versions uh, and ways that they say you can do your creator ID, but um, that's what that goes next. After that, you have another underscore. And then finally, you have your source ID. And the source ID is basically your, your project ID. So uh, what project you're working on or what sound library it's part of. So if you have, uh, if you're creating a sound pack or something, you could put that in there at the end as well. And that's it. Those are the four components to your sound. Uh, and that's what makes up the creator ID. And really the most important thing is that you have the category ID at the beginning and then the effects name afterwards. So those are kind of the, two most important, but of course you have the four parts that you can play with. All right, so when working with others and uh, other professional audio uh, people, this is uh, probably one of the best ways and easiest ways to uh, name your sound file so that they remain consistent across the board. Uh, but there is other ways to do it. And uh, another way that you could do it and you might encounter doing it, especially if you're working with other companies and things, is just to have their own proprietary kind of naming convention that they want to follow. So for example, I had worked once with a, uh, a company and they basically, they told me how to write the, the the file name the way that they wanted it, the way that it was going to be implemented into their game, into their system. So it was something like, you know, you would have your character name and then you have a dash and then you have the weapon uh, the name of the weapon, and then you have a dash, and then you have shot, and then dash, and then you have uh, the shot number that you have. So 001 or 002, et cetera, right? So that is how they wanted it to be named. And then they they let me know about that. So they kind of gave me kind of the way they wanted to have it. And then now I can just go, and then whenever I'm creating the sound effects, I, can, I have um, a system that I can follow to name those sounds. So those are kind of the two uh, um, kind of general ways that you'll probably encounter when you're creating sound effects. So you'll you'll definitely encounter the UCS and then you'll, you might also encounter some proprietary things. So just things to keep in mind. Those are two very common ways to be naming sound effects, especially when you're working uh, in a, an audio team. All right, so we've talked about the UCS and uh, different ways that you can name your sound files when you're working with others. But what about when you're just expanding your own personal library and nobody else is gonna be actually seeing the sounds that you're creating? Uh, how would you name those? And for me, I like to take a different approach. I don't like to use the UCS because it's kind of limiting in terms of descriptor words. Um, you know, I don't like to have a lot of characters in my sound file name when I'm using the UCS system. And a lot of the uh, extra descriptor words and things like that will go into the metadata. But when I'm creating my own personal sounds, I don't like to go and start putting in a lot of metadata just because it can be very time consuming, especially if you have a lot of sounds. So what do I do? So the way that I've kind of slowly de developed over the years to create my own sound files is I have my own kind of folder structure that is my own personal sound library structure that I've slowly developed and added to over the years. And the way that I name my sound files is in line with that folder structure. So for example, uh, it'll start with sound effects. That's always my first 
label at the beginning of my file name, sound effects, and then I have underscore, and then I'll have my uh, first folder name. So let's say it was weapon, and then I have an other, un other underscore, and then I might have something like gunshot, and then another underscore, and then I might have something that describes the gunshot even more, and then an other underscore, and then shot, and then whatever shot it is, okay? Then after that, once I have that kind of basic name in place, then I'll go in and I'll put a dash, and then at the end of the sound file, I like to put in uh, some more descriptor words, either how it was recorded or how it was designed, so that if I ever go back to it, I'm like, oh, that was a really cool sound. How did I create that? Well, you know, in the way that, that the UCS naming works, you can't really see how it was recorded or how it was designed, right? It's just meant to describe what it is that you've done. So because I've already have all these descriptors at the beginning to know what it is and, and what it sounds like, then at the end, what I like to do is say how it was recorded or um, how I designed it. So what plugins I use is normally what I'll put. So I'll put in, for example, if I was using portal by output, I'll, I'll put in like portal, I'll put in like OTT, and like especially if there's an effects chain, I'll put in all the effects that I have in that effects chain so that I have an idea of how it was created, what plugins I use to be able to create that sound. So if ever I want to go back and even just get close to what I created, at least I have some sort of idea of what to use and how I could use it to recreate that sound. All right, so here's an example of what I'm talking about here. So here at the beginning, this is a sound pack that I'm creating here at the beginning. You can see it's my sound effects. I have synthetic creatures. That's the sound pack. This is the type of sound that I'm creating. So I know that there are going to be synthetic creatures. Session, this is just for me to split up the different sessions whenever I'm working on it. So usually they're different days or just different types of sounds that I'm working on. And then here I have design clicks. So I know these are going to be clicky sounds for synthetic creatures, right? So I already have my descriptor words, so that's perfect. And then after that, I have my dash to show exactly how I created these. So for these specific ones here, I used RX D click and I also used a vocoder to be able to create these right here down here you can see I use patch up the granular synth and then here down here you can see I use palindrome so I, I always kind of describe either what plugins I used or what they are so here you can see these ones at the top here are mids and low so they're more focused on the mids and the lows clicks and rather than like super high clicky stuff right so uh, yeah, they're, they're just different ways of describing exactly what I created here. All right, so we've talked a bit about uh, how to name your sound effects. Now let's let's just go over quickly like how I like to categorize my sound. So I know everyone's going to be doing it a little bit differently, but I would just want to show you here inside of my own personal uh, sound library what I do and kind of why I do it. Now I know it's going to be a bit different than uh, others because I kind of do things differently because I sell sound packs as well as do my own kind of freelancing stuff. And um, yeah, so I just have a lot of different things going on. So my... my I, try to separate everything appropriately, but let's go over it right here. All right, so I'll start at the very top here. You'll notice here that I use an entire drive for my sound effects. So here you can see my E drive is my sound effect drive. And inside of here, you can see I have sound miner and database, uh, sorry, base head. These are my sound miner and uh, base head databases. So they're just in there. Next here, I have a DDA free sound packs. This is a free sound packs that I've created uh, for uh, either giving away or just over the years, the stuff that I've given away on YouTube or in my uh, on my email list. Here, DDA uh, free monthly. Again, these are uh, more free sound packs that I created for my email list. Uh, here, game projects. These are my NDAs. So any NDA that I have, any game projects or freelance projects that come in, I'll, I'll put inside of here and it'll get its own a folder inside of this project, right? So everything's super cleanly organized. I know exactly where my sounds are for specific projects that way. Okay, next here I have my published sound packs. And the reason why I do that is because I uh, publish and sell my own personal sound packs. So I keep them all organized in here so that they're easy to find and I know exactly where they are. Next here I have my purchase sound packs. This is where any, any sound packs that I've purchased um, from anywhere in the past, I, I keep them all in here and they're all organized so they're easy to find. Back here I have uh, two raw recordings folders and these are just backup folders. Um, I don't really use these anymore. Most of the time when I'm recording now, I like to be able to uh, kind of clean up my uh, clean up my recordings and then have them so that they are set and ready to use. So I don't really keep my backups anymore. Uh, maybe I should, but uh, these are older backups. Anyways, they're here. I don't really use them anymore. I could probably transfer them out, but that's what these are. Next here, I have my SFX. This is my main library, so we'll go over that in a second. And then SFX Free. These are kind of free sound packs and free sounds that I've collected over the years, you know, from A Sound Effect, Boom Library, uh, Crotoss Audio, etc. So that's what that is here. All right, so here, this is my main sound library. And in here, I tr I, there is only sounds that I have created. So Again, like I said before, I like to keep these all separate because I design sound packs that I sell and I don't want to have any kind of copyright infringement. So I make sure that all of my sounds, everything that I record, everything that I design that is from scratch, purely just my own designs, I keep in here so that they're separate from everything else so that I know that whatever I'm using in here, I can sell or um, yeah, I can use in sound packs without any kind of issues. So in here, this is kind of an ongoing and evolving organization, uh, organizational structure. So these folders are always kind of changing. Uh, sometimes I'll add more inside of these uh, different structures, inside of these uh, folders, sorry, um, I'll, I'll add different subfolders. So like inside of my weapons here, you can see I have archery, explosives, guns, lightsabers, mainly with swings. So these are kind of always expanding. And then I try to always add as much 
like as many more descriptor words inside of here as I can. So for example, inside of guns, I have a whole different tons of guns. Inside of these like sci-fi guns, sometimes I'll even add more. So for this one, I don't hear, but if I, if I can, I'll go even deeper to be able to describe everything as much as possible uh, so that they're very detailed in terms of what it is that I've created here. So that's what these are in here. And like I said, everything in here has been either edited and is ready to use drag and drop. So for example, in my home and office, a lot of these, for example, have can openers. They're all bit, they've all been chopped up and cleaned up so that I can just click on these and then drag them uh, into my session or into whatever so that they're ready to use. Some of them inside of like, for example, sci-fi stuff here, these are just design files. So these, again, they're all ready to go and use. All right, so now that we've talked about some naming conventions and how I use naming, we've also talked about uh, categor categorization and how I personally categorize my sounds. Um, I kind of wanted to quickly show you how it might look like in a uh, real life kind of environment situation when I'm working. So here we go. So here inside of Reaper, uh, you can see inside of my Media Explorer, I have these exact same kind of files here so that everything's separate, uh, like I said before. So if I'm using with my uh, sound effects folder only drive here, these are just all the sounds, like I said before, that I have recorded and designed from scratch. So I know that if I'm selecting this file and, and I'm just starting to choose sounds from here, I'm only going to be getting sounds that I have designed and recorded from scratch. So there's not going to be any kind of uh, copyright infringement or issues or anything like that. I also have um, uh, separate uh, folders or um, databases here that I create whenever I'm working on a project. So here you can see my synthetic creatures like I showed before. So that, I could just click on that and then I'll have all of my sounds from that project so that they're all just there and available and they're just easy to find. Now, another thing I really want to show you, which is really great, especially if you're going to be using the uh, UCS system, the Universal Categorization System, Category System, and that's a really quick and easy way to rename inside of Reaper. So inside of Reaper, there is this awesome script. It's a free script, um, as far as I'm aware, um, and it's called the UCS renaming tool. Yeah, UCS renaming tool. I'll make sure to look at, uh, put a link in the description below, but here it is. I have a shortcut to it, but I'm just going to click run on it. And what it does is it opens up this window. So when you set it up, uh, you, you'll set it up so that I, I don't exactly remember what I was doing, but anyways, you kind of set it up and then it, it, it automatically opens up this window, which is great. So, all right. So what you do now is here, you can easily select a category, but instead of like kind of having to go back to the UCS website and choose a category and then like type it back in, What's really great is here, you can just say what your sound effect is. So right now I know I have a bird call, right? So I just typed in bird here and now it'll show me all the possible categories that the bird can go under. So now I can go into here and see if birds uh, are in here somewhere. So uh, birds that prey, no, nope, I don't want birds to prey, birds crow, birds fowl, birds miscellaneous. Uh, maybe I'll do something like birds miscellaneous. So what I can do is I can just click on it and now it's automatically been applied up here. You can see birds and you can see miscellaneous in the subcategory. Everything's been updated automatically. So now it's just a matter of me uh, putting in what the bird is. So I can just say bird chirp, bird chirp isolated. Let's say that. And then maybe I'll put a, a number on it, something like 001, something like that. Category, category ID. I, maybe I can put my name like that. And here they give you examples of like how you could write your name. Sound source, I'll leave that blank, this blank. Now in terms of processing, how it's going to be processed inside of Reaper here, I have it set to regions and uh, selected regions in region manager. So what I'm going to do here now is I need a region so that it works. So I'm going to do it like that. And now inside of my region matrix down here, I got to make sure that that one's selected. All right, I'm opening up here my region marker manager. And here I can just select it like this. Okay, now that it's selected, now I can go back into my uh, renaming tool here and I can just click submit and it should automatically rename that sound file. So if I go back into here, no, sorry. So it renames the region. And the reason I do it this way personally is just because I, I generally export uh, based on region name. So now what I can do is I can just go export the sound file and then have my region name here. And now it's going to export the region name, which is going to be the UCS name. So it's already all done. Now, if you wanted to, you can change it up so that it actually renames the uh, item itself here. You can see media item. So it changes the item name uh, and you can do like whatever uh, search area you're looking for. So I, I was doing selected regions in the region manager so I can select exactly the sounds that I want to rename and nothing else, especially when you have a tons of different files. I like to do it that way. But anyways, you have the different options in here and it's really cool, really useful and really quick to um, to, to rename sound files into the universal category system. So if you ever want to do that, that's a great tool. I use that all the time. It's really awesome. All right, so that is how I name and organize and categorize all of my sound effects. Uh, I hope you found that useful and valuable. And just like I mentioned in the video, a lot of this is kind of centered around my workflow and what works for me. I know 
people are going to be doing it differently. They're going to have different ways of doing it. So I'm actually curious to know, like, if you have a different way of doing it and you're doing it different than, than me, I'd love to know how you do it. So please leave it in the comments below, uh, especially if I can improve kind of what I'm already doing here. I know it's probably not even the best or anything. And there's a lot of different ways I could probably make it uh, more efficient or faster or quicker or whatever. So I'm actually really curious to know what you do and how you do it. So uh, let me know in the comments below. It'd be great to learn from you and also to have just kind of everybody talking and discussing about it so that we can all kind of um, grow from that and, and, and learn from each other as well. So uh, yeah, feel free to comment below. And uh, just a reminder uh, of that training that I have if you're working on building your portfolio and creating that kind of online presence, especially if you're just starting out, uh, the training is down there. It's free. You just put in your kind of your email and then you'll have instant access to it. So uh, that's a uh, link will be in the description below. And I think that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.